How's it going folks? Taylor Wachowski here. In today's video, I'll be teaching you how I teach dogs to accept a fearful stimulus. This could be anything from a metal bowl rolling around on the ground, the dishwasher, to a trash can, to marbles rolling, the sound of water, and basically anything and everything in between. Today we're going to start with a metal bowl, since Adonis takes it very personal and he doesn't really like the sound of a metal bowl rolling around. This happened because when he was young, I tried to desensitize him to it, I did it wrong before I knew anything, and I ended up flooding him, so that's never good. So today I'm going to teach you to avoid my mistakes and do it properly using systematic desensitization. Now after this video you're going to need your doggy, some treats, an optional treat pouch and clicker, and a certain stimuli they might be a little bit uncomfortable with. So if you're ready, then let's get started. So we're going to start with a metal bowl. This is Adonis's main nemesis. He does not like the sound of metal tapping. It's not a good boy. Uh, he doesn't like the sound of metal tapping. It makes him very uncomfortable. He feels really nervous about it when he hears it. Um, so we're going to get him used to this uh, using pressure and release. You can also, uh, you might have heard of it as advance and retreat or systematic desensitization. Boy. So what we're going to start with is he can look at it and I can click it. If they're terrified of it, you can just put it down and just let them, you know, go up to it and kind of free shape them just coming up and interacting with the item itself. Um, so he just looked at it, now I want to click and reward for that, I want to mark and reward. You don't have to use a clicker, you can use your voice. Um, so I'm just going to maybe wait for him to look at it again, um, or I can look it up. I am a good boy. So he's looking at me, good boy. <laughs> so I'll give him one for that. Um, I can point to it, he looks at it, good boy. If he wants to interact with it, that's great. He can see that it's going to make noise, but he's the one making noise out of it this time. So it slid a little bit, he licked it. I want a reward for that. So here's what uh, pressure and release looks like. So I can tap and then I can take that noise away. So I make noise and I take the noise away. The noise is the pressure, release is taking that noise away and then I can reward him. So I can tap, stop, good. And then I can click and reward. Or you don't have to click and reward. This is what it would look like if you didn't click. So that's pressure <laughs> for reward. Now we're going to see if touch. Good boy! So I want him to make the noise himself so he's a little bit less fearful. He sees that he's the one that makes the noise. Um, that way he knows exactly where it's coming from. Good boy! Now I'm feeding him out of the bowl so again it's something good. It has a good association. I can tap it again. Good boy! So he made that noise himself. We want to make sure he doesn't make too much noise. I can slide it around and then reward. I can slide it around again, reward. Now when you do your pressure and release or you're, you're making that, you're making giving the dog stimulus, you're making stimulus, you don't want it to go on too long. You always want to make sure to give your dog more release than pressure uh, because that's where flooding comes in, you give them too much pressure, uh, then they get a bad reaction. Um, good boy, touch. Touch. Good boy! So I was there to stop it from making too much noise. I'm making a little bit of noise there. Uh oh, we're out of treats. Oh no, we got no treats. Good boy. Maybe I'll cut more. Good, I can try over here because it sounds different from behind him than it does in front of him. It sounds different in the left ear than it does in the right ear. Um, good boy. Now we're working fairly quickly because he seems to be okay with this. Um, you know, if you're more afraid of something like, say, the vacuum, which we need to work on, you know, he's a little bit more reactive to that, um, then it might take a little bit longer. For your own dog, it might take a lot of lessons um, you know, a lot of little tiny lessons to even get this far, or even just as far as tapping, or just, you know, for example, doing that. So we'll see if we can... Good boy! So that was a good test. I don't want to do that too much because I don't want him to start to get nervous again. That's what happened when he was flooded when I was, was uh, teaching him before, before I knew much about giving him pressure, giving him release, um, you know, adding stimulus, taking that stimulus away. Basically, we're teaching him to be 
just uncomfortable enough to the point where he's not going to blow, but he learns to cope with it. He learns that it's okay to be a little bit fearful because it'll go away and it's not going to hurt you. He and he he's been uh, interacting with this item and he hasn't gotten hurt in any bit, you know, in any way. Um, he has he's not going to die from it. Um, and it goes away before he has time to blow up. So we don't want them to blow up. In the end, think of it as a balloon. Um, we're putting pressure. Touch. So he's sniffing. Touch. Okay, what if we... Oh, okay. Touch. Come on. You can do it. Touch. <laughs> so he's a little bit nervous. That's okay. Um, so think of it as a balloon. The more you fill it up, the more it gets filled up with air. Good boy. Um, you fill it up too much, it's going to pop. Naturally. Good boy. I'm a little off on my clicking game. I'm not quite ready. Um, but you see now that he's just, he's learning to touch it and play with it. Good boy. He sees it as a rewarding thing. And this whole time he's making noise with it. This time I'm going to, good boy, he moved it with his nose. I want him to get used to making noise with it. So he sees the noise coming from him. So back to our balloon uh, analogy, um, metaphor, whatever. You fill up a balloon too much with air, it's going to pop. It's like the same with a dog. They get nervous, nervous, nervous. They can handle it, they can handle it, they can handle it. They can't handle it, boom, they blow up. They either react, they panic, they get scared for him. <laughs> for him, it would be, he would start whining, he would pant, he might shake a little bit if he gets a little bit too nervous. Um, we don't want that, you know, we've taught a bad lesson, but if we can teach them to put just enough pressure and then move away, now he just sees it as a game, which is terrific. We're gonna move this guy around again because um, it's gonna make different noise on this end than it did before. Good boy, he's still interacting with it. Good boy, I'm gonna, good boy. So I was able to tap it that time. Good boy. Good boy, so I don't wanna add too much pressure. I was just kind of testing. This time we'll add less pressure. So you always wanna be unpredictable when you're getting your dog used to pressure, when they can handle it, when he can handle this. You wanna become unpredictable. Um, try things differently, you know, add a little bit more pressure, add a little bit less pressure next time. Good boy! <laughs> so now he seems to be quite a bit more comfortable with it than he might have been in the beginning. Um, anytime I move this drawer here that the bowl is in, it makes a little bit of noise. He might panic if he hears, um, you know, a clank against the, the oven door or the dishwasher or, uh, you know, Hermes cage, anything that makes noise with that particular metal sound, if he hears it outside, it just kind of sends him into a panic. So instead of just ignoring it or punishing him or just, you know, teaching him to ignore everything he's afraid of, I want him to learn to be able to put up with what he's afraid of. I want him to learn that it's actually nothing to be afraid of. Um, that it's not anything that's gonna try and harm him or kill him. And instead it makes him a better dog, it makes me a better owner, a better trainer. Um, I get better with timing. Um, I learn how to, uh, you know, put pressure on him and take it away, basically getting him, you know, giving him just a little bit of discomfort, you know, just enough to say he's like, hey, I'm a little bit nervous, but then it goes away and, oh, okay. If I learn to think instead of just react, then I learn that it's actually nothing bad. Now that has to be proper timing done on the human's part. If we just sit there and just put pressure, 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 eventually the dog's gonna freak out. Um, if they have nowhere to go, that is flooding. They're gonna learn to, they're just gonna shut down. They will learn, they will develop learned helplessness, which means no matter what I do, it's not gonna go away. So just don't bother fighting anymore, which is done far too often. Um, now that's not necessarily what I did in the past with Adonis. I didn't just hold him still while you know, throwing a bunch of stuff at him. I just did that, but I did a little bit too much. Um, he was young and he was, you know, very impressionable, very fearful. You know, he was a tiny baby, but, um, you know, but he was uh, a couple years old. So now he's eight and a half, uh, eight and three quarters. He'll be nine years old in June. Um, so he's, he's had a lot more experience with me and getting him used to things. Um, you know, same with if I drop this bowl or if I, you know, tap this or if I, you know, knock on the door or something, you know, he's... He says, eh, mom's just messing with me. She's just doing stupid stuff. You know, no worries, no, nothing I need to worry about. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, that is today's lesson and your lessons can last this long, just a couple minutes or it can last, uh, you know, a few seconds. Uh, I would really say when you're working with a fearful stimulus, less is more. So only do it maybe five minutes at a time. You don't want, you know, as long as your dog is able to accept it. If they start showing more fearful signs, back off, 
uh, end your session there and come back next time and do it for less. So if you did it for four minutes and your dog started getting stressful at three or three and a half, the next time go, you know, three minutes or two, two and a half minutes, two minutes, and then slowly build your way up. Uh, fear is something that takes time. This is, this is behavior modification. Um, it takes time. These are sentient beings. They are like us. They have emotions, fight or flight. Um, and we don't want our dogs to, again, be flooded. We don't want to make them more fearful trying to help them. So keep it short, keep it simple, keep it fun, keep your dog wanting more. So as you saw towards the end, Adonis was playing with the bowl, he was having fun with it. That's perfect, that's what we want. Um, I will continue to work with him on this as well as any other stimulus that we can find that he seems to be a little bit fearful of. Think of your dog as that balloon. You don't want them to get too much pressure where they pop. You want them to get a little bit of air and then let it out. Breathing in and out, <laughs> like yoga. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions, what you would like to see next time. Um, we'll be doing a series on this of many different things um, from, you know, more of this bowl stuff to uh, the vacuum to mopping. You know, if he tries to go after the mop, uh, knocks at the door, anything else that we can think of that he might be stimulated by, you know, whether it's fearful or reactive or he wants to play with it. We'll be going over all sorts of things. So if you have anything in particular in mind when desensitizing a dog, uh, and the same thing goes for many different types of animals as well, uh, then feel free to let me know. Until then, stay positive.